Welcome back to the Reclaiming Creativity Summit. Today I have Rebecca Idlet. Rebecca's superpowers are connecting with people heart to heart and creating an atmosphere of peace and harmony. The fact is that there was a point and time in her life where she was so overwhelmed, overcommitted, and exhausted that she didn't feel connected to anyone, including herself. Mm -hmm. And more than anything, she yearned for a sense of peaceful harmony. Bolstered by the realization that she had lost her life in the rush life, Rebecca began her journey of cultivating a collection of soul tending practices. Her deepest passion is to create opportunities for women to discover what makes them feel most nourished, connected, and fully alive. By combining aromatherapy, Reiki, and soul collage, Rebecca creates a deeply transformative experience in which she guides women to remember who they are by reconnecting with their inner truth and wisdom. Rebecca, thank you so much for being a part of this summit. It is a privilege and honor to have you. Oh, thank you, Alicia. It's so, so nice to be here. Yeah, and so I um, have known you for a little while now, and I know that you have a long creative journey. And even you know, as I was reading your bio, I was thinking, man, how easy it is to get lost, to lose ourselves, our sense of creativity in the busyness and the rush. Yeah, absolutely. It, it truly is. And I think um, a lot of times when we figure in the, the things that we think we're supposed to do, um, the outside pressures from, from, you know, other folks, it's just so easy to get lost in that. Um, for, for me, it was a matter of just making a lot of commitments. Mm -hmm. um, I was a, a homeschool mom. So I, in my mind, I had the time, but really I didn't um, to, for the outside commitments. And um, yeah, it was just easy to, it, it, it just happens. It was easy to get lost and all that. It is so easy to get lost, but um, you found your way back to yourself. Um, and at the time it was pottery, right? Um, actually, at the time, no. Um, it was it was journaling. It was morning pages, is how I how I started that journey back. Um, it, it was um, Julia Cameron's book. Um, the oh, Artist's Way. Yes, The Artist Way. Um, I was in Barnes and Nobles looking for some other book and ended up with that one. Wow. And worked my way through it. Um, but pottery, so I, I have a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts in pottery, and um, that was always my, my, uh, my dream to get back to that. Um, I, you know, and all of that put, put that on the back burner. And actually, um, you know, I talk about not putting it on the back burner. I packed it up and put it in the attic. So it was completely inaccessible. Wow. Um, yeah. yeah, you have had quite the journey then as a potter, but most recently you have become an aromatherapist and you are a um, certified soul collage facilitator and all of these things that, meant, there are so many things that make you up, but all of these creative outlets that you have, they're not just something for yourself, they're things that you're sharing with others to help them reclaim their creativity as well. Yeah, I, it's, it's been, it, it was such an important thing for me to be able to move out of that place um, that I, I feel so strongly about being able to um, walk with others and, and help them figure out the tools for them, you know, the things that work for me are not the things that work for everybody else, but um, there's so many tools that are just so easy and simple. Um, it's just so nice when somebody finds the thing that works for them. Absolutely. So tell me, I, what I don't know about you is how did you come to aromatherapy? Um, well, I probably have always been um, a little witchy. Um, I was a kid, um, 
I grew up at the end of a mile long dirt road. Um, there were woods, there was a river and um, fields. And I was the only kid down there. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was always, I was always making potions and, and that was my play, um, combining plants and, and things. So I've always had that at heart. Um, and, and I've always used them in, in my own home. Um, so, so it's just been a natural progression. Um, it's, it's, um, a little more mainstream now, mm -hmm. a little easier ex to, to access, um, it, all sorts of information. So, um, yeah, I just decided that that was what I wanted to do. Yeah. Maybe I, maybe not decided, maybe I just, um, honored that. Mm. I love that honoring that piece of yourself. How mm -hmm. do you feel like aromatherapy helps you access your creativity or could help others access their creativity? Yeah. Um, there, so that's a, that's a good question. And I'm trying to think of really how I use that. I use one of my, one of my, um, morning, one of my favorite morning, um, rituals is foot soaks. And so I do my morning pages and I usually set up a, a little foot bath with some bath salts and, um, you know, I'll throw in whatever, whatever oil or dried flowers or hydrosols are also really wonderful. Um, so it's usually not the same thing any particular day. I just kind of throw things in and and sit but but the the oil so we think of them as as affecting us physically you know we're used to hearing oh if you if you have an upset tummy you know ginger or fennel will help ease that but energetically they're also um super duper allies for us um i know when i'm working with soul collage cards um sometimes you know, if there's one that, that comes up and it's a little shadowy, then um, I'll pull out rows. I'm looking over here at, um, at my oils. Like I'll pull out rose or lavender because those are just really good for heart and just soothing. Um, if I'm feeling a little spacey, you know, just, just smelling them. Um, or sometimes I'll fix a little anointing oil. Um, so energetically, they, they just um, have that power to just help us make a little shift. And yeah. it's, it's usually really subtle. But it helps. Yes, yes. Absolutely. So can you tell listeners who are not familiar what soul collage is? Yes. Um, and I think it's probably best if maybe I um, show a card. Yes. Um, or, or so. So... Um, so this is this is a a card. I'm trying to get the glare off. Um, this is one of my cards. Um, it was actually made for um, third chakra. Um, <clears throat> so this, the the lion here is um, kind of a third chakra ally for me, a personal ally. And so soul collage cards are. Um, cards that most of the time you make intuitively, you, you um, search for images that, um, that kind of jump out at you. Um, a lot of times they, they seem to choose you instead of you choosing them. So if you've ever flipped through a magazine and, and been drawn to an image and you're not sure why, that's exactly the process. So you pick an image and then um, you, you kind of figure out what you audition backgrounds for them. And each card there, um, the ones I like the size five by, by eight, mm -hmm. and it's just a hard little um, mat board. And then you, <clears throat> so my lion was my, my uh, image. And then the sunflowers I liked um, for the background. And you just kind of audition them and they kind of, choose each other most of the time 
once you get your card made, then you journal. Um, there are four questions. Um, who are you? And then you, so you ask the card, who are you? And then you journal or you can speak it, you can record it, um, but you speak from the card. And that way you're actually accessing your own wisdom, your own intuition. So who are you? And the, the card, you would start journaling, I am one who, dot, dot, dot. And then the second, the second question is, um, what do you have for me today? And you would start, today I give you. The third question is, what do you require of me? And um, the fourth question is, do you have anything else for me today? And by the time you've answered all of those questions, um, not from here, but from here, your heart, um, you really do have such, such a good amount of, of guidance and wisdom. And the beauty of these, of these cards is that um, over time, the energy of the card stays the same, but the wisdom that you're gleaning from it is different. So it kind of, it meets you where you are. You meet yourself where you are. I love it. I love it. Um, and I have had the pleasure of getting to attend one of your workshops and I can um, testify <laughs> firsthand to the power of that practice and the getting the, the, the all absorbing feeling of doing something that's crafty and working with your hands, but not even needing to be quote unquote, I mean, I don't even want to say not creative, but no, no, you don't have to be in a making art mindset to do it. Yeah. And it pulls up such, um, it's just such therapeutic, just making the card itself. And then when you add in the layers of self inquiry by what's been created, I mean, it, it, it was powerful for me beyond belief. Um, yeah, it is, it is as simple as cutting and pasting. Um, you don't have, the supplies are so simple. It's scissors, stick glue, um, the little card. Um, and that doesn't have to be anything special. It can be, you know, a, an index card. Um, and, and a pen and paper. Yes. Those are, those are the tools. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit more than sitting down to write but it's not so much like with pottery, you know, I have to have clay and a wheel and time and, and water and really get messy. And yes, yes. So, so it's like you have to plan your, your big chunk of time to do that. Um, but this, you know, you can just pull out a few magazines, cut, paste and write. Voila. Voila. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I love that soul collage. So I'm wondering, I mean, you strike me as one of those people that creativity just oozes out of you. Um, mm -hmm. And it just, it's like that aura around, like you can tell you're a creative being, but I, I'm wondering what does creativity mean to you? Do you define it in any specific way? Um, you know, I've, I have actually been thinking about that since I knew the summit was coming on or coming up. Um, there's, there's such a difference between creativity and making. They're so interconnected. They're, they're so interconnected. But what I find in talking to folks that sometimes that word creativity or creative just shuts them down. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, you know, they swear up and down, I am not creative. But when you change that word to maker, you know, just working with your hands and making, um, it seems to bring some ease to folks um, who, who don't have that confidence because creativity, sometimes you think about published authors and folks who are, um, who have art exhibits and, you know, all the things. Um, but then there's that simple act of, you know, getting a couple of bouquets of flowers and putting them together, um, making a delicious meal 
you know, setting the table beautifully. There's so many ways to, to be creative. Um, so I really love that, that um, bringing that word making, a ma being a maker. Yes. And um, I think it's a lot of pressure for us sometimes to think about being a creative. Ah, uh, I really like that because it takes off the pressure. Yeah, yeah, it, it really does. My, my mother is, she is such a beautiful hostess and that ho hospitality is, is her love language. Um, and she swears up and down. I am not, I don't have a creative bone in my body, but yet when, when I go to visit her, um, when I spend the night, you know, she's, she's put little bed vases by the bed and in the bathroom. And so, so I think it's as easy as finding things that bring you joy Yes, and surrounding yourself with them. Uh, I 100% I agree with that. How do you feel like you use creativity to access your inner wisdom? Well, the soul collage cards. Uh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the, soul the soul collage cards have become such a huge part of, of my life. Um, I, 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 most days you will draw a card and journal from it. Um, I set an intention, ask ask questions, um, and then draw cards. So to me, um, that is the the current way yeah. of of accessing that that inner wisdom. I can understand that so much. I mean, after taking the workshop with you, I mean, I knew it was probably something that I was going to really enjoy, and I did really enjoy it. But I think what I was not prepared for when I did Soul Collage with you is I wasn't prepared for... I accessed pieces of myself that I didn't know that I had suppressed. I accessed pieces of myself that um, I just didn't know were hidden. Mm -hmm. um, things that I didn't know were back in that subconscious rolling around um, just by doing what felt like play. Right, right. The beauty of it too is that they, the, they will not, so when I talk about they will not, it's, it's not like they have the power, but they're the tool for you. Mm -hmm. um, your your um, wisdom, your intuition, it will not, reveal to you anything that you're not ready for. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, a, there's an important, um, it, it's not a rule, but it's a, a guideline with, with the cards is when you're in a group, you don't speak to somebody else's cards. Um, in readings, you can certainly read from somebody else's cards, but it's the message that you're receiving. So I would never say, Hey, Alicia, your card looks like it means, la 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 because if it does and you aren't ready for that it could be you know you could leave with a horrible mm. um feeling so and a lot to process yeah but that speaks very well to um how interested that the cards keep the energy that they originally started with so that when you are ready for that message of whatever you created in your subconscious, that it can bring itself forth. Yes. It's, it is akin to dreams and dream analysis. So if you're, if, if you're um, into, if you dream a lot and you are into writing your dreams down and interpreting them, it's akin to that. That's a great way to look at it. I think yeah. for sure. Um, what else would you like to share about creativity? Mm, do it. Make so much time for it all the time. Um, yeah, it, I, I spent so long, um, just checking off the, the to-do list. Um, I missed it. I felt like my, I felt like, um, I was missing my arms or, you know, my lungs, like I couldn't breathe. Um, and I didn't realize that. So, you know, just making time to, to be creative, to make things, and it doesn't, it can just be for you. 
you know, just for yourself. It doesn't have to be shared with the world. Yeah. And do you have any tips on making time to like, how do you make creativity and make or making a priority? Um, it, it has it, with, with the morning pages and the soul collage, it's become part of my day for most days, not every single day. Um, but it's just part of how I start my morning. Um, and I also, this is a little side note. Um, I have really felt the need to start walking or so, so I'm using this stuff as my reward because I love it so much. <laughs> so I've started, you know, going out in the morning, getting that walk in, and then I can, then I can sit down and, and write or journal. Oh, that's wonderful. But there's so many ways. I mean, I mentioned, you know, the flowers. I love flowers. I had flowers on my, on my little buffet today and I, I looked at them and they were they were falling they're falling. falling off so I, I thought maybe uh your viewers wouldn't want to see <laughs> the withered flowers but even withered flowers are beautiful right well they were <laughs> <laughs> well Rebecca I think you have a free gift for everyone can you tell us what that is yeah yeah so I am gonna um send a, a one of my cards uh, one of my soul collage cards with some, with some, um, journal prompts and, um, you know, you'll get a, you'll get a different message, but hopefully you'll, you'll find some, some wisdom. Oh, Rebecca, thank you. And thank you so much for being a part of this, uh, collage, or this, <laughs> this very cleaving creativity summit. We really are just, it's wonderful to have you. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Alicia. This has been such a pleasure.